This is a really bad idea, Goose. Well, Jim, we still need to find a co-host while Rad's overseas. Mm. Uh, and uh, this might be our best option. Best? Yeah. Uh. 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 All right, let's get this over with. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Okay, so I've opened an access point to the cloud, so we're ready to download his AI. Hey, okay, let's hope this works. Yeah. Oh, wait. <laughs> Noobs? Here? I must warn the others! <laughs> D -d Darren? <laughs> Coming up on the show! It's a superhero team-up in Team Titans Go Figure! Plus the super smashing of Brawl Out! And Goose dazzles us with some virtual reality in a let's play of Beat Saber! <laughs> uh, now, have you got a mirror? My robot, he doesn't feel 100%. Oh, no, you look great, Darren! Yeah, Daz, I'm sure it's just a bit of data lag. Uh, now, remember, Darren, this is just until Red gets back, OK? Oh, come on! We've got games to review! Just like old times! Oh, let's go! <laughs> this was all your idea. We've made a terrible mistake. Uh, getting comfy there, Daz? Affirmative. Oh, everything looks so different from this perspective. Well, I think we to spend some quality time together. Did you want to kick off the review? Oh, why, thank you, Jim. <clears throat> uh, developed by Grumpy Face Studios, Teen Titans Go Figure is the sequel to the 2016 mobile RPG Teeny Titans, which saw players collecting figurines of their favourite Titans and DC characters to battle it out and become the Jump City Mega Teeny Champion. This sequel kicks off after the Teeny Titans craze has passed, and our heroes discover that the company that makes the figures is being sued for copyright infringement. Well, you will not believe what I just perused in my daily periodical. With one final shipment being sent out, the gang is swept up in the collecting craze once again. With a new mission, find out who filed the lawsuit and why. Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? Titans, go to the store again! Unlike the original, where you had to be Robin, you can now choose which Titan you want to play out the campaign as. This doesn't affect how the story unfolds, but does add a bit of extra fun, as each character is voiced by their TV show counterpart. You have excellent taste. There are three main areas for you to explore. Jump City, Gotham City and Metropolis, all of which are littered with side quests to complete, stores to buy figures at and coins to collect. It can be a bit overwhelming at first, especially given each map's impressive size. But don't worry, the game does try to get you familiar with the basics. Take this! First of which is combat. Yeah. Fights are a three-on-three three event, where your goal is to take down the other team. Go! Each side has a status bar that will fill up over time, allowing you to perform attacks once the bar is charged to a certain point. Each character you collect has their own powers as well as there being different classes, each with their own advantages. Affirmative. Some characters can heal teammates or boost the strength of their abilities, while others can unleash devastating attacks to keep the enemy pinned down. The more damage the power deals, the more time you'll need to allow for it to charge up. <laughs> to succeed, you need to think strategically and decide on the best approach. Do you go in with some quick but light attacks, or bide your time and wait for one massive hit? I love how intense some battles can get, especially when you and your opponents are evenly matched. You'll sit there, eyeing off both status bars, trying to work out who's going to hit their power first, switching between characters to see who has enough health left to take a hit from the enemy. To stay one step ahead, you want to be levelling up your teeny squad as much as possible. The main way you do this is by winning fights, which you can do by completing story missions, side quests, or simply approaching NPCs and throwing down the gauntlet. 
You can fight almost anyone you encounter, which offers a nice variety of opponents, something I was particularly thankful of when it came to the grind. Yeah, there is a lot of grinding to be done, and from pretty early on too, but it always has a purpose, and the rewards are actually necessary and useful. XP to level up your characters, coins to purchase new figures, and most importantly, experience fighting different types of enemies. Which really helps in deciding who you want in your crew. I remember the first time I came across Poison Ivy and she absolutely destroyed me with her deadly kiss ability, which blocks any special bonuses you might receive as well as healing. So I saved up enough coins, bought her figure and then used her to win a bunch of battles later on. It's also just really cool to duke it out with some classic characters. <laughs> Going toe to toe with the Joker and Harley Quinn. <laughs> Battling it out with Batgirl. And partying with the Penguin. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, even if it normally ended with me getting my butt kicked. We should stop to mention the in-app purchases this game has. They are in the form of Riddler eggs, which contain all sorts of random goodies, paint tokens to customise your figures, or, if you want, you can purchase the more rare, expensive characters. But I'm happy to report that none of this is mandatory, and everything you can buy can be purchased if you earn enough in-game currency. Which is good, considering the game isn't free. I did like that if there was something I needed, there was always a way to get it. We should wrap this up, though. Final thoughts, Jim? I had a really good time with Teen Titans Go Figure. It's fun, action-packed, and doesn't take itself too seriously. I'll be honest, I didn't expect to enjoy it this much, and now I don't want to put it down. It's a four and a half from me. What I think I like most about Teen Titans Go Figure is that it keeps you on your toes. And not just in the combat department, but in the interactions you have with other characters. It's a lot of really goofy fun that makes you want to keep coming back. I'm giving it four and a half out of five rubber chickens. Wonderful! Uh, now, be honest, do I look a bit out of shape? Oh, oh no, no. no. Good. <laughs> All right, it's time to make like spoons and scoop. First up, a Minecraft plugin that adds the challenge of managing climate change. Nick Perillo's plugin, also known as a spigot, for Minecraft's Java edition is known as global warming. It introduces carbon emissions that occur through smelting ore or using the furnace, which then contribute to extreme weather and can be offset through planting trees. I guess that's one way to learn about the challenges of a changing climate, even if it's in a virtual world. Next, Nintendo has made a copyright claim against Pokemon Essentials, essentially shutting down the popular tool for making Pokemon fan games. Created in 2007, the role-playing Game Maker program featured a range of Pokemon assets and allowed users to make their own Pokemon-style games relatively simply. But alas, it seems Nintendo may be adopting the motto of gotta catch them all when it comes to unauthorised use of its copyright material. Moving on and... Ugh, did it just get cold in here? <gasps> ugh, it must be because the long-rumoured Arctic expansion for Subnautica has been announced. <laughs> The standalone expansion known as Subnautica Below Zero is floating into early access in the coming months and is set to include an icy new chapter complete with glaciers, icebergs and possibly a hovercraft style vehicle. <laughs> Could be a very cool way to add even more to the world of Subnautica, literally. And now, the extra scoop! <laughs> this week it's a bit of fan art courtesy of Spawnlings Benji and Noah. A very artistic tribute to the world of video games. Thanks, Benji and Noah. Remember, if you have an extra scoop or some fan art of your own that you'd like to share, then you can send it here. All right, guess it's time to stop making like a spoon and now I can, um, I can make like an atom and split. Or make like a tree and get out of here. No, wait, and leave. And like a tree. I'm sitting down now, or should I say about to stand up for a let's play of Beat Saber, a virtual reality game that's been at the top of the most played VR games list, even though it's still in early development. Now, the game has gained quite a following online thanks to its unique twist on rhythm games by combining the hypnotic trance-like gameplay of something like Guitar Hero with a couple of elegant weapons for a more civilized age. That's right, I'm talking lightsabers. So let's dive in and combine the force with some fat beats.
Okay. Single lightsaber. <laughs> I'm a living legend. You ain't heard yet. You not get the message. From the moment that I'm stepping in, I get a couple weapons. Yeah, I turn to a beast when I'm repping. Hey! I'm a living legend. You ain't heard yet. You not get the message. From the moment that I'm stepping in, I get a couple weapons. Yeah, I turn to a beast when I'm repping. What? Ah, oh, that's so much fun. <laughs> Well, there you have it. That's a Let's Play of Beat Saber. And like most VR experiences, I think I need a minute to get my bearings. I think the biggest standout of this game is how such a simple concept translates so well into a virtual experience. I mean, if you'd told me when this kind of technology was first announced that the coolest experience I might have in VR would be with a music rhythm game, I would have thought you were joking. And I guess that's because the majority of games we've seen so far using VR have been limited to things like shooting galleries or games that just put you in a stationary seat to observe what's happening around you. But what Beat Saber does is take what's already fun about VR, full body motion and cool weapon interaction, and wedge them into one of the most unexpected of game types. Instead of quick reflex button presses, you're now completely contorting your body, which is a very strange sensation. One that might feel as silly as it looks, if not for the fact that you've got two of the coolest weapons from fictional history attached to your arms. Another great design choice is the music that this game is built around, being a mix of drum and bass and electronic dance. It not only fits the mood of a futuristic neon setting, but it also works because of the balance of fast-paced chorus sections with slower breaks in between. And this allows you to gain your composure before another big build-up gets the blood pumping. Ah! Oh no! <laughs> oh no! No, oh, it's really low! Oh no! Speaking of which, this game is a solid workout. I mean, I've burnt my fair share of calories playing dance games, but this, this is on another level. <sighs> it's actually quite tiring. <laughs> and it might be my favorite thing about Beat Saber. The whole thing feels second nature. I'm pretty sure anyone could pick this up and start slicing and dicing like a pro in no time. Mind that you might want to start out on the simplest setting first. Got it now, oh no, no. Switch, red, blue, which is which? Ah, 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 ah. For now, though, I am super keen to jump back in and chase some of those high scores on a trickier difficulty. In fact, DJ, spin me up another track. <laughs> I'm about to let go of my conscious self, act on instinct, stretch out with my feelings, and... Oh, no, it's already started! <laughs> 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 Alright, Gem, it's just you and me for Ask SP today. I thought we could establish a bit of a Darren-free zone, you know, so we can have a moment of calm. Oh, sounds like a good idea. Oh. Oh. Uh -oh. Hello? Uh, Goose, hello, it's Darren. I was just on my way to the Ask SP desk, but I seem to be locked out. Huh. Oh, yeah, I think the door might be uh, stuck or something. Sorry, Darren. We'll just carry on, shall we? Oh, I want to be there with you. Oh, I have precious knowledge to dispense. Uh, and there needs to be at least 30% more robot toys adorning the desk. Uh, look, sorry, Darren. Heaps of questions piling up. Gotta go. Bye. Look, let me just... Oh, poor Darren. I feel bad. Oh, look, it's probably for the best. Now, let's get stuck in with a video from the Toy Mario Bros and Yan Yoshi. Hello, here's a Toy Mario Bros. And I'm from Yan Yoshi, and we have three questions for you. One, who's your favourite Mario Tennis Station character? Two, are you going to leave Yuli Wii Maker Luigi's Mansion, and when is it coming out? Three, what's your favourite Yoshi game ever? Be honest. And Yoshi's are going to have a picnic. Bye! Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Oh, thanks, Toy Mario Bros and Yan Yoshi. Keep an eye out for your coveted GGSP pin in the post. In answer to your first question about our favourite Mario Tennis Aces character, for me, it's got to be Yoshi. Yoshi! I am a Yoshi guy through and through. Uh, what about you, Jim? Nice Yoshi voice there, Goose. My personal preference is Waluigi. He's got the height, the track record or court record, and the floral flourishes. Gotta love that special move. A special mention to Chain Chomp too. It's nice to see what Chomp can accomplish given the chance to break free from the chain as a playable character, like balancing the ball on his head. Ah, oh, he's quite talented. On to whether we will review Luigi's Mansion when it comes out on 3DS. Well, it's a possibility. The game is due out in October this year, so we'll have to consider it then. 
Now, on to our favourite Yoshi game. I would say Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo will always hold a special place in my heart. Otherwise, I also enjoyed the wool-based whimsy of Yoshi's Woolly World. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the new Yoshi game on the Switch is like. Though it looks like the release has now been delayed to 2019. Ah, uh, yes, good selections there. For me, I've always had a soft spot for Yoshi's story on Nintendo 64. So sweet, such charming music. It's like a big beguiling hug. Aww. Now we'd better take another question, and this one is from Oscar. Hey, Oscar, how you doing? Dear GGSP, I have two questions. One, in Subnautica, will you be able to play multiplayer? Two, why do people not like No Man's Sky? It looks so fun. Do these. Yeah. Thanks, Oscar. In answer to your first question about whether Subnautica will get a multiplayer feature, well, originally the developers had planned to include some kind of co-op play, but over the course of development, it became clear to the devs that adding multiplayer would be a leviathan of a task. So it now seems pretty unlikely. I've heard there are some mods out there for multiplayer, but they aren't official, so I imagine there would be limits to the kind of multiplayer experience they could provide. Good point, Goose. Now, on to why some people don't like No Man's Sky. Well, there certainly seemed to be a bit of disappointment when the game first released. Why do you think that was, Goose? Mm, I think a lot of people had high hopes for the game, and at the time of initial release, some thought it didn't seem to live up to these expectations. Yes, but the updates since, and the most recent large updates, seem to have added much more content. So you could argue it's now an improved experience. Check out our review of No Man's Sky next through our online channels to see what we thought. Good plug, Jim. All right, I think we have time for one more question. How's about this one from Ellie? <laughs> I have two questions for you. One, how do you make a world in a Roblox? Two, is there a Harry Potter video game on the Xbox One? Thanks, Ellie. In answer to your first question about how to make a world in Roblox, if you mean how do you create your own Roblox game, well, you can do that using Roblox Studio. That's right. There's a bunch of templates available to start with that you can customise. And Roblox has made plenty of online tutorials to run you through the basics of making your very own game. As for whether there's a Harry Potter video game for Xbox One, well, there were quite a few for Xbox 360 and other platforms, but surprisingly, I don't think there are currently any on Xbox One. I know, right? Curious. Unless some eventually get added to backwards compatible titles. Oh, I did hear rumours that the remastered LEGO Harry Potter collection, which was originally a PS4 exclusive, might be coming to Xbox One at some stage. Well, there you go. Well, would you look at the time, because that's all we have for today. If you have a question for us at Ask SP, then you can go here and send it in. Oh, things did really run quite smoothly without Darren piping in all the time. How is that possible? I have no idea. Maybe you should answer it. Uh, hello? Ah, oh, Jim, glad I managed to reach you. I had to hack into the studio's telecommunication system. Uh, you know, I'd almost forgotten about one advantage of being in my physical form. What's, What's that? that? My lasers! <laughs> So, Darren, aside from getting to grips with your old lasers, how does it feel to be rocking the chassis again? Well, as much as I do enjoy being constantly connected to the mainframe, I have been missing some of the simpler things, like the feel of a cool breeze on my grill, Aww. the smell of a fresh batch of cheese toasties, mm. and the raw heat of competition during a brutal match of couch multiplayer. <laughs> wait, wait, what? It's time for Brawl Out! Ding, ding, ding! is a party-style fighter where you and up to three friends bash, crash and smash each other around multiple platform stages with the ultimate goal to be the last one left standing. It's been out on PC and Switch for a while now, but it just dropped on the Xbox and PS4 after its latest update. Before we delve any deeper, we should probably mention the elephant in the room. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Darren. I, I think you look great. I'm talking about stating the obvious comparison between this game and the Smash Bros series. Brawl Out unashamedly takes huge influence from Nintendo's Brawler, mimicking most of its mechanics right down to the character movements, percentage style damage meter, even the colourful roster of characters from other games. 
It is hard not to draw constant comparisons with the iconic brawler, but, as they say, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And Brawl Out does attempt to put its mark on the genre. The real question is, can it build on such solid foundations? Or does it fall short of reaching the same level of greatness? Yeah, and if you're going to try and copy something as successful as the Smash series, you better bring your A-game. And at first, Brawl Out does appear to have the makings of a fun brawler. If you're new to this style of fighter, then a brief tutorial takes you through the basics, which involves some simple attacks that can be expanded on by combining them with different directions, jumps and dashes. Unique to Brawl Out, however, is a rage meter that builds as you battle it out, which you can activate while it's building to interrupt enemy attacks or stop yourself from flying too far off screen. Ah, yes, but activate it when full and suddenly your attacks will send opponents flying while you become harder to knock off yourself. It's an interesting mechanic that can completely turn a fight around if managed well, and did make for some fun, thrilling final moments. Sadly, it seems that this really is all that Brawl Out has to offer in the way of anything new or unique. The rest of the combat is very basic. Many fighters share similar movesets, and without the inclusion of any items or weapons, there's nothing to break up the monotony and repetition of fights. Plus, the stages you fight on are particularly uninspired. Most are just made up of a couple of static platforms. Meh. I can see how just focusing on the brawling makes for more technical fights, but some more game modes or other variations would have been appreciated. Especially as once you've fought up a few of the single-player ladders and had a couple of matches IRL with mates, there's little else to explore here. You do earn coins and level up your fighters the more you brawl, but all the rewards are simply cosmetic, such as costumes and accessories. Plus, the rewards are all randomised, so you're never sure to unlock the gear you might be after. It was always good to see I was progressing as I was playing, but these rewards just weren't enough to make me want to keep grinding through multiple matches. That said, I think the game does deserve credit for its creative character design. All the fighters look great, and many feel like they could actually exist in their very own games. Well, funny you should mention that, as the three most recent additions to the roster are Juan from Guacamelee, the Drifter from Hyperlight Drifter, as well as Yuka and Lely. And it is great to see characters from outside the Nintendo universe getting their chance to step in the ring. It's just sad, then, that Brawl Out doesn't take the time to do anything interesting with their original characters. I mean, you have a blank slate to create a whole world around these unique brawlers, and what do we get? This. Well, Goose, I think that's because the biggest issue with Brawl Out is one of identity. It's not quite sure what it wants to be. Uh, final thoughts, you two? Well, this is by no means a bad game. In fact, the controls, fighting style and all-round design are surprisingly polished. It's just impossible not to play this without drawing comparisons to the series that invented the genre. And with Smash Bros Ultimate just around the corner, I can't recommend this unless you're desperate for a quick couch brawl with some friends. I'm giving Brawl Out two rubber chickens. I do hope the developers continue to support and try and grow this universe because the potential really is there. For now, though, I'm hanging up my gloves until a real challenger approaches and giving it one and a half out of five rubber chickens. <sighs> yeah. Oh, that tickles! Hold still, Darren. There we go. OK, the upload of your AI back to the cloud should take about a minute. Thanks for helping host this week, Darren. Oh, my pleasure. Next week on the show... We head back to the Mexiverse for the Mexican Metroidvania Guacamelee 2. Plus, see what happens when we try to run an emergency ward in Two Point Hospital. We never stop caring. Oh, back to the cloud. Make sure you keep my row body in pristine condition. Uh, yeah, sure, Darren. We'll see you on the other side. Darren out! Phew! All right, we'll see you next week. Goose out. Gem out. We are not telling Rad about any of this, OK? Oh, no way.